Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, Peace Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the Peace Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Jim Fisher, and this is the Go Pro Hero 7. Black. Black. Yes, because there's also Hero 7 white and Hero 7 silver. But no Hero 7 session, right? No session. Session's done. Okay. There are okay. no more session cameras. There, there are screens on all the GoPros now. Okay, great, great. Except but, for the Fusion, but that's another thing entirely. Uh, GoPro <laughs> names! Okay, okay, so... Yeah. So this is a brand new, uh, brand new GoPro GoPro generation. Was just was this just announced today? An hour ago, 9 a.m. Okay, Eastern was the announcement. Uh, so they they're putting out. We only have the black. Mm -hmm. There's all. This is four hundred dollars, three ninety nine, four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. The silver's in the mid range is three hundred, and the white is the entry level two hundred. Okay, so now this looks like a GoPro. This fits in all the existing GoPro mounts. It is the same form factor it's been using since uh, the Hero 5 generation. Uh -huh. uh, the plastic is actually on the black is actually now black instead of gray, which is, you know, matches up better. It's a nice yeah. matte finish. Uh, but yeah, same accessory, same mounting cage, same everything compatibility. But better image quality. Uh, yes, fast. Well, faster. You have improved uh, improved JPEG processing for stills, but this isn't really a stills camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Better 4K right. in that it does the uh, improved stabilization. It's using the GP1 chip, the same as the Hero 6, mm -hmm. but they've tuned it a little bit. They've added some extra memory, so the stabilization, stabilization is better. They're calling it hyper smooth now, mm -hmm. and this will do hyper smooth at up to 60 frames per second at any resolution, including 4K. And that's, that's really helpful because when you think of GoPro and you think of pe how people use GoPros, it's usually in relatively shaky conditions. Yeah, they're you're, you know, you're often mounting on something or wearing it. Uh, you know, on your per mounting it on your person. If you're mounting it on something, the stabilization, the previous generation stabilization was really good. It's mm -hmm. better now, but for the handheld stuff, when your hand's a little shaky, you know, you're moving quickly, the HyperSmooth here is definitely doing a better job than the Hero 6 stabilization. And now the HyperSmooth you're talking about, that's different from uh, before the show we were also talking about, it stabilizes time lapses as well, right? That's called Time Warp. Okay. It's using the same kind of tech. And there's two ways. There's normal time lapse, which is you know usually set the camera up someplace still, and you get the pretty sunset, or you put it on like a slider, and you can mm -hmm. have some motion, you know, over the time. But they're going for something called time warp, which is more hyper lapse, which as what we've been known in phones and other things, where you're moving around and taking time lapses. And we've got an example here: of both both versions, the standard time lapse moving in a car, and the hyper the time warp. And the time warp is so much smoother. Yeah, let's let's call that let's call that up. Let's show this to people, especially because so this is this is a feature which I find really interesting because um, I run these projects during the year where we use GoPros as dash cams. Yeah. And uh, our GoPro as dash cam videos are not the smoothest thing you would ever see. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah that I would I would certainly switch to to the time warp for for dash cam footage. Mm -hmm. I was shooting handheld out of window down a little further. Mm -hmm. Down a little. For a time warp, uh, okay. up, up well, one. We'll, that's we'll start that's with the, the choppy one. Yeah, let's start with the let's start with the shaky one. So what we have here is ten seconds of shaky, kind of wobbly, kind of choppy, zoomy video uh, on a cloudy day in New Jersey. Yep. And then same route in the yep. other direction. Yep. Right. Just shot a little bit earlier. Yep. Shot a little bit earlier. Ten minutes before. And it's about but 15. so much smoother. So much smoother. Yeah. Great, great. So, um, so yeah. So that is a that is a distinct, distinct improvement. Yeah, you know, it's 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 very cool, and it's not something I've seen in other action cams. Uh -huh. And you know, that's one of the reasons to buy a GoPro versus your generic one. Like uh, we like the Yi 4K Plus. It's a uh -huh. very good camera for around 250. It does 4K 60. It does digital stabilization. Not as good. Uh -huh. It's the video quality is excellent. Not waterproof. Whereas uh -huh. this, you know. This is waterproof without a case to 33 feet, you know. Yep, it's GoPro. Now, now, uh, I'll go fetch that okay. GoPro. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's so, a GoPro, you can do that. So now I was reading about the other, the other new features on here. There's one of them, uh, there's one of them which I hate, which I'm showing off right now. Okay, and that is, uh, it has the ability to take uh, something that is evil and wrong and bad. It's destroying our country. It's destroying our aesthetics. It is something that must be eradicated from the earth. It must be stopped. All of these must be deleted. Why does it take vertical video? Instagram. 
Ugh. Instagram stories specifically. Yeah, people love Instagram I, stories. I have like a violent physical reaction to vertical videos, okay? Yeah, I'm not a fan. They uh, really make me want to hurt people. They make me want to hurt the people who created them. They make me want to hurt the people who are in them. The problem with vertical video is not the Instagram stories. That's great. It's That's the format you're watching it in. I've done it. I, I, I have to admit, I have shot Instagram story video in portrait orientation. The problem is when someone shoots video with their cell phone of a newsworthy event and sends it to Channel 6 and they run it there and it's like on your, on your, on your big 4K TV, you've got this weird strip. I'm like, just uh, hold the phone the same way yeah. the or, TV or, is if you're going to do that. People. Or how about when they somehow shoot vertically and like it's actually a horizontal event and the I entire just, thing is rotated 90 degrees. It's just weird. Yeah, looking just, at it like this for some you don't reason know, yeah. and what the heck? Yeah, okay. uh, but yes, you could always shoot vertical video with a GoPro. You know, right. you just hold it away. Now the UI uh, changes. Your 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 rear the information the, the uh -huh. text on the rear display changes and on the front to, uh -huh. to match the orientation of the camera. Right. And when you send it to your smartphone, just like now over Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. uh, it recognizes that and lets it say, oh, this is a vertical video. We're going to put this right in Instagram stories. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at some more of these samples. Um, this is your 4K 60 yep. sample footage here. This is all shot with HyperSmooth. This was uh, this was captured by Victoria Song, who did some of the field testing for this mm -hmm. review, uh, and she got to mount the GoPro to her helmet and go on a bike ride. Okay. Also out in New Jersey, and, and this uh, th this is at Action, what used to be known as Action Park. And this was this was shot at uh, this was shot by Victoria because she's our fitness person. Uh, and also doing a fit thing. Right. She has much less chance of injuring herself than uh -huh. I do doing one of these things because so I. I would just, I wouldn't be here if I did this because I'd be dead. Though the range of ways in which Victoria has injured herself over the past year is really impressive. And spoiler alert, we're going to see it if we have this clip run long enough okay. once more. Here, I, I, can, uh, I can fast forward. About, about I, what point? Uh, uh, it's, it's like, it's a little, yeah, right, it's right before, back up like, uh, back up to like 45 seconds. Okay, okay, we're going to. Go back to let's go yeah, back. right about there, right about yeah, okay. there, right about here, right about here. And we've got YouTube buffering problems. This is this is looks blocky right now on your live yeah. feed. If you go on, but what's important is web, how it isn't bouncy and choppy. Yeah, how you it can see you can see the helmet bounce. It's mounted to the helmet. You can see how yeah. much the helmet's moving around, uh, but the actual footage is. Uh, man, I hate YouTube streaming. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, but 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 a very stable falling off the bike. And she's fine. And so he's fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have any questions out there about the new GoPros? If someone has the Hero 6 Black right now, should they upgrade? If you should upgrade, from, consider upgrading from the Hero 6 Black if and only if the improved stabilization will help you. That is, if you shoot a lot at 4K 60 mm -hmm. for the slow motion for that fast, you know, effect, and you want that to be as smooth, smoother than your current 4K 30 footage with the mm -hmm. with the Hero 5, with the, I'm sorry, with the Hero 6 Black. Uh, also, if you like the idea of the moving time lapse, those are the big updates. Uh, you know, uh, other than that, if you're happy with the if you're happy with the Hero 6 Black, don't upgrade. But if you're not, if you say I want to shoot stable, really stable footage at 4K 60, then yeah, sure. So, um, oh, another question out there. Did you say the recording time and battery life? Someone, I did uh, not. It's actually not quite as we got uh, the Hero 6 Black. We netted our standard battery rundown test, which just runs video until the battery dies. We got 86 minutes. Mm -hmm. This uh, this was closer to it was about 75 minutes, so mm -hmm. a little bit less battery life. Mm -hmm. In real life, in, in Victoria's real world testing, she was getting swapping out batteries about every 45 minutes because mm. in addition to taking video, you're letting the camera run for a little bit, you know, when it's not doing anything, you're revealing footage, you're transferring things to your phone. So there, you know, it's not quite as good uh, as the previous generation. And I, I put that down to the uh, processing improvements, putting more tax on the image processor. Now, there's going to be a lot of people out there who are seeing this and they say, well, this is really great. It's $400. I'm on Amazon. There's a lot of $200 action cameras on Amazon. There are, there are many good $200 action cameras. Uh, there are some landmines you can step on mm -hmm. in the $100 and, and under range. <laughs> we reviewed a bunch. Uh, it's probably two summers ago. And a lot of them are still on sale on Amazon in like the $50 to $100 range. And a lot of those just didn't work. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I was giving one-star reviews, one-and-a-half-star reviews, some It's twos. always kind of fun when you do that. Uh, 
On the, our favorite budget model right now is the SJ Cam SJ6, mm -hmm. which uh, does 4K with okay, you know, mm -hmm. digital stabilization. I actually got an email from them. They they have a new model, the SJ8 SJ8 out, uh, and they're going to send that in for review at some point. So we'll take a look at that as a mm -hmm. budget, you know, potential good budget entry. The Yi cameras are very good. Uh, they make they make them. They have a Yi Discovery, which I think is around $100, the Yi 4K and the Yi 4K Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, the 4K Plus we reviewed, liked it a lot, great video quality, not as good stabilization, not waterproof and ruggedized. Mm -hmm. So it comes with a waterproof case, but if you want to have the ability to really go rough and tumble on your camera without any sort of protective case, GoPro. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been finding, I've been finding that the Yi brand in general, if you need to recommend a, a low cost something, yeah. It's a pretty solid, reliable brand to go to. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it, and it's the other thing that you get, you get with the GoPro is the software support. You get the phone app, you get the desktop mm -hmm, editing mm -hmm. app, which you don't get with Yi. You know, Yi right. makes good hardware, but their software support is terrible. Right, and th that's... And, which and, is fine. You know, if, you, if you're savvy enough to use your own video editing software and good enough to not... And you don't have to worry about transferring video to mm -hmm. your phone wirelessly and having an app that will mm -hmm. automatically create a, an edited clip for you, then sure. Now, speaking of uh, transferring to your phone wirelessly, one of the new features here, I believe, is live streaming, right? Yes, yes. It can do 720p live streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and some other services. And now, does that go through your phone? How does that work? You need to use your LTE connection because you're connecting to the phone app, and then the phone is on Wi-Fi to the GoPro, so it can't use your home Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you use your LTE data. OK, OK. Uh, any more questions out there? So ultimately, would you recommend this over a Yi cam? It depends on the user. If it's someone who feel who is, will benefit from the rugged design and will benefit from GoPro software ecosystem, then yes. If you don't care about it being rugged, you're not so much interested in the stabilization. If you're going to do more tripod video work, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and you're comfortable using Premiere Pro or even iMovie or you know Windows Movie Maker or whatever the basic editing software is, then sure, save some money and get the Yi. Uh, it's it's a very good camera, but there are reasons to get to spend a little more on the GoPro. Yeah, I mean, uh, just think about what you're saying about the ruggedization. Uh, the Yi is less expensive, but if you break a couple of them, then you've spent more than a GoPro, right. which you won't be breaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any more questions out there? Okay, great. So this is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. It is, is it now on sale? It's, yes, it's on sale now. Okay. Uh, it's $400. Mm -hmm. It is a four-star editor's choice rating, the same as the Hero 6 Black. I feel like it's pretty much the same level there. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it replaces it in the lineup. It's just, a, it's a little bit better. It's a year later. You know, if you're shopping for a new GoPro, if you're shopping, you know what, there's a good question. If you're shopping for a new GoPro and you can get the Hero 6 Black at a discount or this at full price, I'd probably buy this. Okay. That'd be my recommendation. If that's if that's your situation, that's a very, you know, something that may be more, more practical to a lot of folks than I want to upgrade my Hero 6 from yeah. last year. I, I have to say, I find the stabilization improvements here really, really compelling. That's the story. It's yeah. the, the stabilization's the real story here. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another cool thing, 10 a.m. Eastern on Facebook, as always. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We have a new cool thing every day.